Hello and welcome to Trace Gaming, of course, welcome back to Tears of the Kingdom. Today we're talking about Zonite machines, and not just ones for specifically transport, but more like the concept of using Zonite machines in a variety of ways. There are so many crazy ways that you can make ridiculous contraptions in this game, but the very silly things cost a lot of Zonite, and there's a lot more efficient ways to simply plop down, say, a trap that will help you destroy a pack of enemies, traverse specific environments, create combat vehicles, Vehicles. Basically, have a lot of fun while also greatly improving your ability in this game. So I'm going to go over some concepts and different topics to give you kind of the tools to understand that you can do certain things in this game using Zonite machines. And not only can it be so beneficial, but it can be very efficient too. I'm standing here in front of what you will find all over Hyrule. These are Hyrule restoration materials and they can be very useful. You see, by simply having access to auto build, I can spawn these things anywhere in the world once I've attached them for the first time. As you can see, I've now created a thing and that goes into my auto build list in my history. From there, I can easily just press favorite and now it's saved in my favorites. This means I can spawn this in anywhere in the world for some zonite, six in this case since it's only two materials. Of course I can find those materials and make it cheaper or literally free which is always helpful and speeds up the process. It's this concept then that allows us to make some direct combat auto build options. For example let's take something that's going to be directly useful in combat. We're going to take just two bomb flowers like so then we're just going to attach them which will technically <laughs> technically create a zonite invention. Because I've done that I've attached them they are now in my history and again I can favorite these. Meaning at any time I can pull out for just six zonite a massive explosive damaging option. All they need is a quick hit and there you go very explosive and also uh, obviously in areas where we have grass a useful wind tunnel like that. Something as simple as literally just two bomb flowers next to each other can be an incredibly powerful tool especially when we're considering that we're dealing with say a pack of enemies. These guys aren't exactly the strongest enemies in the world but it is an effective way to to kill them for just six zonite and it doesn't matter how many enemies they are that's a very powerful explosion right there if for some reason you don't have auto build unlocked and you don't know where to get it very simply you need to head to the great abandoned central mine here in the depths to unlock the forge construct and basically be given auto build from lookout landing you'll do a first quest with the depths that brings you to this crater and as you can see just by heading south and southwest you eventually will hit the central mine and do an event there to unlock it so we've started with a very simple let's create bombs wherever we want concept now let's talk about combat zonite machines zonite devices can be found all over the world different sort of gumball machines. You can see these dispensers on your map when you've interacted with them. This one in this case can give me wings, fans, flame emitters and portable pots, whereas this one can give me beam emitters and time bombs. Of course finding dispensers and being able to place these is useful because it gets the ball rolling but once you've got the auto build you can use zonite to spawn them in infinitely. Let's take a big wheel which is a great tool for transportation but did you know you can attach things to the top of it and create traps, combat machines. As soon as we attach anything to the top top axle here, what's going to happen is it's going to pull in the bottom one, creating a flat surface which then when powered will begin to spin. But let's take a wooden beam here and put that in the middle. This gives us a point of access to put things onto this beam and then create spinning combat devices. For example, a physical combat device which will spin and slap enemies dealing nice damage and knocking them over. By attaching something as simple as a flame emitter, a frost emitter, shock emitters, or particularly dangerous the beam emitters, to the top of it. This is quite literally just a large wheel and a flame emitter attached to the top. By powering it and certainly walking away, we have a spinning fire machine, which as you can see will set fire to objects which can be very useful in certain environments or just deal great damage to enemies. Because that is literally only two pieces of zonite machinery, it's only six zonite to place one of those, and we can plop that in the middle of combat getting the benefits of that easily. So like I said, when it comes to making these machines, you want to use the minimal parts for the maximum efficiency. This means it will cost less zonite to make with auto build spawning it in. And that is where very long logs like this come in. As you can see, this is a lot bigger than say those wooden pillars we were looking at earlier. This is four times the size in fact, and it's only two pieces, which means it should be very cheap in the auto build feature, which as you can see, it's only two parts, so it's only six zonite. So if you want to create more of a physical version of these traps, this gives you longer range and it's also very cost effective. For example, these shock traps here will create a very deadly physical spinning trap that will hit with its thunder spikes 
anything that impacts with it. But then we can automate these types of combat traps even further using the homing carts and the construct heads. So the homing carts, their whole point is to be a little fighting bot that will home in and attack enemies directly. Whereas the construct heads are stable, not moving objects that will spin and aim at the enemy. So as you can see, these little guys, you just turn them on and they'll start looking around for enemies and move towards them when they find one. They're not very effective on their own, that's for sure, though they can work as a distraction. But then it's very easy to attach something that will attack and deal damage such as an emitter and then it will move towards the enemies with that emitter. This one being only two pieces is again only six zonite for a very powerful combat tool. By simply placing this near to an enemy and turning it on it will automatically seek them out and face them front on which is the way you want your tool your actual weapon to be facing so that it's effective and as you can see I'm fully CCing these guys and I'm just standing here but we can make this more effective and more accurate very simply. By using a construct head this will automatically automatically home in on the enemies. Putting it on top of a homing cart then is very simple and a very elegant way to do this. And as you can see, using only three parts, we now have a homing, moving, mobile sentry that will fight for us with whatever weapons we give it. That's a very powerful concept. And this one will only cost nine Zonite, three per piece. Of course, all of this will use Zonite battery, these charges that, as you can see, I actually have the full amount and it's going down really slowly for me. That is because I'm wearing the Zonite set, which massively improves the efficiency of Zonite devices, meaning I can run a vehicle for longer or have one of these fighting tools running a lot longer. You can get one piece of this armor set on the Zonite Forge Island, which is quite near to, say, the Wetland Skyview Tower. And in quite a tricky spot, you need to ascend into one of the towers inside the final area. It's the one with the lava on it, so you need to make a platform using water or ice and then ascend up. The second piece is here at the Sky Mine, which is the northern eastern point of the map, the nearest tower being the Ulri Mountain Skyview Tower. This one just requires you to solve a simple shrine puzzle, but the armor is actually in the orb on the bottom level. You need to go in the orb and activate it, then leave the orb and go into the entrance at the bottom of the orb to find the secret room with the chest in it. Lastly, the helm can be found here at Lightcast Island at the northern western point of the map. The nearest tower to this one is either going to be the Lindor's Brow Skyview or the Rospro Pass. Either way, make your way up to the Lightcast Island and solve the puzzle with that to get the helmet. With these pieces, you can see how my Zonite battery is drained so slowly, and it's not just good for combat, it's incredible for transport. Let's start with an absolute classic, one that at this point anyone that's aware of flying machines should know about. This is two fans and a control panel in between them, and it creates what is such a simple and elegant way to fly and move around the world. You just push forward to get sort of a forward momentum and go down to the ground slightly you can let go and it'll pull you more up you can pull back to go more directly vertical specifically and with this full zonite set you can see how efficient this is on the battery i've only just used three cells now and i've been flying for like 15 to 20 seconds and i've able to get really high up really quickly this is incredible for getting around the world especially to get to the sky islands or specifically if we're underground in the depths in the dark this is a wonderful way to traverse what is very difficult terrain and if you just throw say a like light flower at either side of it you can make it a mobile light source generation and completely avoid some of the tougher stuff about the depths by flying over it this is one of the most popular zonite transport devices in the game so it shouldn't really be a surprise to you that this is an option but for the same zonite at nine you can make a ground version that's actually a lot more efficient on your battery because it's not using fans which are actually quite costly as you can see these are two small wheels and then a control panel between them this gives you a ground machine and i'm not even pushing forward right now and it's incredibly cheap on power as i push forward i can make it go even faster and this is one of the fastest and most effective cheap ways to get around the world and you can see how fast i'm actually going even though yes i'm not flying i would say i'm moving forward at a much faster rate than the fans and I haven't even used half one single cell to make an incredible distance already. This is probably the best way to get around on the ground where the terrain is smooth and reliable because when you pull back and you move forward these things can lose their balance a bit and that's why as you can see there you go as you can see they're not entirely all terrain and while the big wheel version certainly has more torque and suspension as you can see <laughs> there's a minor problem with the control panel in that, that that will spin you must create yourself a platform then you need to end up adding more wheels then it becomes very cost inefficient on the zonai and 
that's why the small wheels are actually the better option. Not to forget, you can easily add things to machines like this, such as some barriers with spikes on them to not only protect you physically from maybe anyone trying to attack you, but also work as something you can deal damage with by ramming into it. If you're unsure and want some inspiration, I would recommend looking for schematics, which are pre-built devices to show you what's possible with all of these different contraptions. You can find stone schematics at main abandoned mines all over the depths by talking to the constructs that are locked there and maybe completing the puzzle or mini game required to get that going, such as defeating all the enemies in the area. In return though, you'll get a stone schematic and they'll even provide you with the parts necessary to make it using our build to try it out for yourself, usually leading to a chest. Some of these can be incredible, such as the giant bridge or even the instant scaffold for climbing up high. And there's one particular one that I think teaches a really good lesson I wanted to show you. So what we've got here are two balloons and some flame emitters. As normal, these flame emitters will pile the balloons and then we'll get some nice vertical lift going at a pre pretty reasonable rate. The problem is this is draining our battery and eventually we will run out and then we'll just be hanging here, right? Well, no, because what it's shown me is that you can easily place a torch above the flame emitter, as you can see. And that flame emitter is, of course, lighting the torch. So as I turn off the flame emitter, the torches remain lit and that means there's still fire going into the balloons, meaning we're actually still going up into the air right now. We're still getting vertical movement. Then the fact that we're not using any power and still going up means we can let the flame emitters recharge and turn them back on again to get going once more. The only thing limiting this device for just infinitely going up into the sky is ultimately how long these platforms last. After a few minutes, they do kind of start to flash and flicker and then just cease to exist. But this is an incredibly effective and efficient way to get really good vertical movement and climb mountains and get to very high up places such as sky islands that are hard to reach and knowing that you can infinitely go up and even recharge your battery and then just keep going again i mean look how fast and efficient this is at getting vertical movement with a simple flame emitter on one torch and a balloon here's a tip if you found something that you want to keep in your auto build but don't want to make it expensive on the zonite for example in this one this floating platform that i want only has a rocket which is pretty expensive so attaching something really cheap and not relevant in any way is going to be a good way to go. And it literally can be a food item. I can literally just attach a berry to this, which will have no impact on its ability to work. And because I've attached something, it's now, of course, in my history, and I can now favor it, keeping it forever and spawning it wherever I want. And this is the perfect example of a really cool trick to get anywhere you need to. These are floating platforms that cost so night to actually trigger. And when I put it in the air, it's of course gonna fall down, but if you power them, these flowing platforms will do as it says it will flow. And this can give us a great way to basically reach things that are hard to reach otherwise. Something as simple as that can be done pretty much anywhere and give you ascend options. But you can keep this pretty simple with something as effective as a spring. By placing this and simply hitting it, you'll be launched up into the air, which works as a pretty damn effective way to do the same thing. Again, we can attach one food item like the berry. And once again, this will now appear in my history list. From there, we can favor it and spawn one of those wherever we like. You can also stack them, which will, yes, do what you think it does, improve the power of the spring, sending you <laughs> literally double the height, which is amazing. We can go up to three and get really, really good height. But you can see even just two is super effective and should probably reach pretty much anything you're trying to overcome, especially down here in the depths. Further, there's even a launch pad schematic that you will find down here in the depths, which uses a spring in a really clever way. They've created a platform at the baseline and then a small little shelf that you can stand on. And what this does is angle the spring, meaning you're forced in a diagonal direction, able to reach, hard to reach things, especially in tight environments such as caves. As you can see, a spring is a great way for me to reach this ship in this cave without smacking my head against the wall and basically losing all momentum. But there you have it. It's entirely up to you what you create and what you spend your zonite on. But one thing you should always remember is that you only have eight favorite slots, so you want to keep it as effective and efficient as possible. I have a flying machine and a ground machine that are both really cost efficient. I have an aggressive bomb option and I have a baseline for any 
combat trap using a big wheel. If I feel I need to make something that's very long, having those two long logs as a baseline to then build on is fantastic. And then I have my floating platforms and my springs for any traversal I might want to do in the world. If this does anything, I hope it encourages you to try some different things, experiment and experience a lot smoother gameplay. While it's really cool, the crazy things you can do with these contraptions, there are a lot of actual viable, very useful things as well. If you have any tips or suggestions for that concept, then then drop it in the comments, you might just help someone. But for now, I've been Hollow, you've been you. Thanks for watching, we'll see you in the next one. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos. Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes. Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice. To reiterate that it is nice. To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage. Is, uh, goodbye.